There's a word from the Lord It comes this morning from the book of St. Luke The 8th chapter and the 27th verse St. Luke 8, 27 When you find it, you will signify by saying amen. amen Amen, if not, look on our screens St. Luke 8, 27 St. Luke 8, 27 And when he went forth to land there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes neither abode in any house but in the tombs let us read that together this morning and when he went forth to land there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes, neither a board in any house, but in tombs. I want to use for thought this morning, a meeting with Jesus. A meeting with Jesus. Can I get some help in this house? A meeting with Jesus. My brothers and sisters, when you look at the Synoptic Gospels this morning, we must look at Matthew. Matthew presents Jesus as a king and then when we look at the book of Mark he presents Jesus as a servant but then when you scroll over and look at the book of Luke Luke presents Jesus as the son of man Luke my brothers and sisters uh, he, 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 he somehow or another wanted to get the feel of Jesus being human and divine yeah, yeah, yeah. remember that Matthew writes to a Hebrew mind Mark writes to a Roman mind but Luke this morning writes to a Greek mind are you listening to me? Look at this thing this morning. Uh, if you look at the background of Luke, really Luke was a physician. Uh, he brings us to a scene this morning where Jesus is met by a devil himself. The first time uh, Luke brings it to our attention is uh, there's a storm at sea. And while the storm is at sea, the Bible said Jesus gets on the ship. And a storm comes up and while he's on the ship, the Bible says that the disciples began to get fearful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they began to uh, try to figure out what was going on. The Bible said they began to dip out water as water began to come into the ship. The Bible said the more water they dipped out, the more water came into the ship. And Jesus was somewhere aboard, on board the ship. The Bible said he was fast asleep. Can I get a witness? But notice here, the Bible said they remembered that Jesus was on ship and they knew that if they could wake Jesus up, that Jesus could do something about the situation. The Bible said they went and they woke up Jesus. Said, Jesus, wake up. Don't you care that we're about to perish in this boat? Don't you care? There's a storm on the sea. There's a storm that has arrived. And the Bible said, Jesus asked them, where's your faith? The Bible said, Jesus looked at the wind, he looked at the water, and it says, peace, be still. He calmed the wind, he calmed the water. And the Bible said, and there was a great calm. And I want to tell you something this morning, whenever you have a meeting with Jesus, I don't care how the waters are raging in your life, I don't care how bad the wind is blowing. The Jesus that I know can speak peace and they have to cease. Somebody's been there. Have you ever had some storms in your life? 
And when you thought about it, you could call on Jesus. And when Jesus stepped in, he showed up and showed out. I said, won't he do it? Look at somebody and say, he's that kind of God. Oh, yes, that's why, I trust, that's why I trust in him. That's why I worship him. That's why I believe in him. And can't nobody make me believe anything else other than Jesus is Jesus. And is Jesus all by himself. Don't need no help. Can I get some help? Oh, my brothers and sisters, look at this thing this morning. Look at this thing this morning. When they woke him up, he rebuked the winds. Now, as Jesus gets off the boat, as he gets off the boat, there was a great calm. As he gets off the boat, I'll say it again. As he gets off the boat, you would think that everything would be all right. Because when you stop a storm right here, you would think that everything else would be pretty smooth. The Bible said it was a great calm. But notice here, as he gets off the boat, he meets a man in the city. And the man that he meets in the city is vexed with devils. Can I get some help? Have you ever been there when you get one problem solved? And you think that everything is going to roll on all right? Something else pops up? That's the way the devil is. Don't you fool yourself. I don't care how you think that you got everything rolling all right. When you, when you think everything is going, the devil will pop up somewhere else. I say, won't he do it? He steps off the boat. The Bible says he, he steps off the boat. And notice, not only does it meet a man that's demonic, has demonic spirits, but look at the man. The man has no clothes on. He's a naked man. Not only is he naked, but he doesn't live in a house. He doesn't live in a shack. He's not even a street man. He don't even live up on a bridge. The Bible said this man lives in the cemetery. Look at it. Look at what it says. He, he dwell among the tombs. That means he's living in the cemetery. Now what kind of man in his right mind would live in the cemetery? And not only live in the cemetery but has no clothes on. So nobody can even visit the cemetery because nobody want to see a naked man jumping from out behind the tombs in a cemetery. Cemetery is already scary enough going in, taking some flowers for your, your loved one. And then that, to, to add misery to it all, you got a crazy man that's staying in the cemetery. Can I paint the picture this morning? Here you are. You got some loved ones living in the cemetery. And you got, so you, you've already heard, don't go to the cemetery. There's a crazy man there. The police can't even get him out. Every time the police run him out, he comes right back. He's connected to the cemetery. The man, he's, he dwells among the tomb. Well, I, I, I want to go and put some flowers on my loved one's grave. I, I want to just go and put it. You can't do it. Oh, I'm going anyhow. And then you show up and time you walk into the cemetery, here this crazy man comes out. Naked. Crazy. Are you listening to me? My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. This was a bad situation. This thing, nobody but a man that's out of his mind lives in a cemetery. Nothing is in the cemetery but everything dead. Nothing is living in the cemetery. The cemetery is a place for everything dead. Are you listening to me? Nobody in their right minds want to live in the cemetery. You cannot be productive in the cemetery. There is no future in the cemetery. There is finality in the cemetery. Can I get some help? You will not find any help in the cemetery. There is no hope in the cemetery. You cannot find any joy in the cemetery. There is nowhere to get any rest in the cemetery. Nobody wants to sleep in the cemetery. The cemetery is no place for people in their right mind to want to live however do you know my brothers and sisters there are some people that are living now in the cemetery I don't mean they're living in Marseille cemetery South View or Shadowlong they're not living in those cemeteries but they're living in the cemeteries of their lives are you listening to me some are living there because of broken relationships. And because you've had a broken relationship, you're in the cemetery. Everything is dead to you. 
Can I get a witness? You don't trust nobody else, and so you everybody else to you is dead. You had a you have a broken relationship with your family. Your sisters and brothers, you fell out because of something that happened years ago and you cannot have a good relationship so you're in the cemetery of your life. You can't have a relationship with your own family. You're in the cemetery of your life. That man mistreated you. That woman mistreated you. So you're in the cemetery of your life. You don't trust no other woman, no other man. Are you listening to me? You have broken relationship, that good friend that you had, that you grew up with, that you used to tell all your personal things to, used to tell all your secrets to, they betrayed you and then they stabbed you in the back so you can't trust nobody else. You're in the cemetery. Can I get some help in this house? Not only that, but some, of, some are in the cemetery because they have lost their will to live. And some folk have lost their will to live. They're not on drugs. They're not on alcohol. They're just crazy. They, they've lost their will to live. They don't take no bath. They don't comb their hair. They don't ever shave. They don't do anything. They have no personal hygiene. They are just existing, but they're not living because they have lost their will to live. Don't you know some folk like that? <coughs> are you listening to me? Not only that, but some of that because they have that that are losing trust in people. Some of us don't trust folk because some of us have really, really been hurt, and they were not on, all on the outside of the church. You got some church folk who have hurt some other church folk, and now can I get some help? You got some folk who have turned away from the church because they have been hurt so bad. Are you listening to me? In the cemetery of their life. Yeah. Now that some of them because some of them in the cemetery because on drugs. Yeah. Haven't you seen these folk? Yeah. They're strung out on drugs. Yeah. And don't you laugh at them because you're just a step away from being there. Yeah. It's just by the grace of God that yeah. some of us are not there. But they're in the cemetery of their life. Have you ever seen them? I call them zombies at night. You go, you come down uh, Hamilton Road if you want to find anything. Come down Hamilton Road sometime three o'clock in the morning. You can see the zombies walking. They're crackheads. They are drug addicts. They are alcoholics. They're walking the street and they walk all night long. They sleep all day and walk all night. Can I get some help in this house? They're in the cemetery of their lives. And others are there because they don't want to do any better. And you got some folks just don't want to do any better. They don't want to work. They don't want to do nothing. They don't want, they, every time they want some handouts. Can I get some help? They are in the cemetery of their lives. But let me tell you something, you need to meet Jesus. When you meet Jesus, you don't care what nobody say about you. When you meet Jesus, you don't care how folks stab you in the back because you know that God is going to make a way for you. When you meet Jesus, you're not concerned about who don't like you. Can I get a witness? Because you're going on anyhow. When you meet Jesus, you don't care anything about a crazy sister or a crazy brother that don't want to have anything to do with you. You just keep on trying to have contact. I don't care when they get sick, you try to be there. Can I get some help? You don't act a fool because somebody else is acting a fool. You keep on loving when you've met Jesus. But you can't do that until you've met Jesus. Can I get some help in this house? Tell somebody you can't love until you meet Jesus. My first point this morning, things start happening when we meet Jesus. Do y'all know that? Things start happening when we meet Jesus. That's why it's evident this morning that some folk hadn't met Jesus because ain't nothing happened to you. You're still acting the same fool you used to act. You, had, you still hadn't changed your ways because you haven't met Jesus. Let me prove my point. Look at verse number 28. Notice this man when he meets Jesus. The Bible said when he saw Jesus. Somebody said when he saw Jesus. When he saw Jesus, you know what happened. The Bible said he cried out and notice what that, and fell down before him and with a loud voice said what have I to do with thee Jesus thou son of God most high notice what it says, I beseech thee torment me not now this man this man the, the demons on the inside of this man recognize who Jesus was 
And let me tell you something. If the devil recognizes who Jesus is, and if the devil has to bow down to the feet of Jesus, don't you know that we need to bow down? And notice what the devil said out of the man. The devil said out of the man says to him, the devil said, Lord, what, what, what are you doing here? Don't torment us. Can I get a witness? Notice here, this is really not the man talking. This is the demon inside of the man. And let me tell you something. You need to stop getting mad with folk. It's not them that's doing the talking. It's the devil on the inside of them. Can I get some help? And you got some folk with some devils in them. Can I get a witness in this house? The Bible says, can I get a witness here? The Bible says when the man saw him, he fell down. He fell down. You know, my brothers and sisters, it may be somebody around us. <clears throat> can I get a witness? That's in the cemetery. And they need to see Jesus in our life. And the only Jesus they're going to ever see is him living on the inside of us. But guess what? If we act a fool like they're acting a fool and cuss like they're cussing, are you listening to me? And, and drink just as much as they drink and use just as much drugs as they use, they can never see Jesus in their life. But we've got to learn this morning. Can I get a witness? We've got to learn this morning to let others see Jesus in our lives. Can I get some help? Oh, my brothers and sisters, when I look at this thing here, the Bible says, the devil said, don't torment us. But notice here this morning, Jesus began to say, now, what is your name? What is your name? Now, Jesus knew that it had to be one or the other. But it sort of surprised Jesus because he says, well, my name Legion. What are you saying, Reverend? My name Legion because I just don't have one devil. I got a whole lot of devils in me. Can I get some help? And don't you fool yourself. You got some folk in here this morning that got some demonic spirits in them. Are you getting, can I get a witness? And I tell folk all the time, you need to be careful. Don't hang on to that demonic spirit. It may not be anything but a jealous spirit, but you need to get rid of that. Because if you have a jealous spirit, the next thing you know, you'll have a backbiting spirit. Can I get a witness? And then you, you have a jealous spirit, then you have a backbiting spirit. Can I get a witness? Then the next spirit, if you don't get rid of them, you'll get another spirit, a whoremonger spirit. Can I get some help? And then if you don't get rid of the spirit, next thing you know, you got some more spirits. And before you know it, you got all of these spirits in you. And then the spirit's going to mess up your mind and you're going to go crazy. Somebody know what I'm talking about. And now all of y'all ain't walking with me this morning, but somebody feel what I'm saying this morning. Can I get a witness? And some of us are walking around here. We know we have those kind of evil spirits and we try to hold on to them because they help us out in the time of need. We got a cussing spirit so we don't want to get rid of it. So when somebody cusses us out, we can come right back on them. We got a low down spirit so when somebody mistreat us, we can put it right back on them. We got a jealous spirit. Can I get us some help? Am I walking down the boulevard? And let me tell you something. Those things are not from God. You need to know this morning. Things like that, that's from the devil. Because see, God is not a, not, a, not a God of confusion. He's a God of peace. A God of love. A God of understanding. A God of joy. God of happiness. God is a God of love. Are you listening to me? My second point this morning. A second point this morning. Meeting Jesus. When you meet Jesus, conditions are made better. Are you listening to me? When you meet Jesus, conditions are made better. Now this man never thought that Jesus was going to do a whole lot of changing in his life because he was dwelling among the tombs. But the evil spirits in him knew that something was getting ready to happen. So the evil spirits said, now Jesus, we know that you're going to do something. But Jesus, don't torment us. The Bible says Jesus looked at the man saying, in the name of Jesus, I command you evil spirits out and the Bible said there was a, 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 a group of swines and I used the word swines this morning but it just didn't fit me because I'm from the country I said uh, so I had to change it from a group of swines to a group of hogs 
I feel comfortable saying hogs. Can I get some help? So the Bible said the evil spirits came out of the man and went into the hogs. But the evil spirits couldn't stand the hogs. The Bible said the hogs ran down. They were smart enough not to hold on to an evil spirit. And if a hog got more sense than we got, I don't know what's wrong. The hogs ran down a steep embankment and drowned themselves in the water. Look at the man here. Look at the man here. The Bible says conditions have been made better. The Bible says in verse number 35, look in verse number 35, see what it says. Verse number 35, it says here, it says, Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed. Notice where it is. He's sitting at the feet of Jesus. Notice how he looks. He's clothed. Notice how he's acting. And in his right mind. And notice the conditions of the other folk. And they were afraid. Can I get some help? When you stop acting a fool. When you stop walking the streets. When you stop cussing folk out. Other folk gonna get afraid of you. And wonder what has happened. Can I get a witness? Oh, but look at this thing here. The man's condition had changed because when the, when, the, when, the, when the evil spirits went into the swines and they drowned themselves, the Bible said the swine owners, the hog owners, went back to the city. They began to tell everybody. Jesus is up here and Jesus has caused this man that was living in the tombs, he's caused this man that was crazy to get his mind back. This man, this man has his clothes on. This man is sitting at the feet of Jesus. And our hogs are dead. Tell somebody conditions change when you meet Jesus. Oh yes, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says the conditions change for the better. This man, where he was once crazy, is now in his right mind. And you ought to be in your right mind. You ought to be in a better place in your life because you met Jesus. Can't you see this man while he's sitting there? While he's sitting there with Jesus, listening to Jesus as he's teaching. And the Bible said that people began to spread the news everywhere. And I want to tell you this morning, that's what you need to do. When you leave church on Sunday morning, when you've seen Mary, Sue, and Bobo, and they used to act crazy, but all of a sudden you see them in church. You see them waving their hands. You see them singing on the choir. Can I get a witness? You ought to go out and tell the world. Can I get a witness? And, well, I saw Susan, Mary, and Bobo. And they've come to the right senses. They're dressed up now. They're in their right minds. And I saw them in the church. They were waving their hands. Can I get a witness? And, well, and I went over and talked to Bobo. And Bobo said, well, I met Jesus. And ever since I met Jesus, things hadn't been the same. Can I get a witness? Things I used to do, I don't do them no more. Places I used to go, I don't go there no more. Can y'all help me preach this morning? If you don't help me, it's all right. The preacher done already showed up. Can I get a witness? I heard, I heard the Bible say the man was sitting there. Can I get a witness? And every time I read about Jesus healing somebody, every time he healed them, he said, go and don't tell nobody. Can I get a witness? But I wondered, I wondered, I wondered, I wondered, I wondered, I wondered. Why did Jesus, 
why he didn't tell this man the same thing can I get a witness I heard somebody say they came to Jesus and they told Jesus you need to leave here can I get a witness I saw Jesus uh, didn't change any words but Jesus began to pack his bags uh, and said come on boys it's time to move and go somewhere else can I get a witness look at the man that had been healed by Jesus they said Jesus everywhere you go I want to follow you can I get a witness can I get a witness look at the man he wanted to follow Jesus and my last point is can I get a witness when you met Jesus you got to let the whole world know you found him you met him for yourself can I get a witness I heard I heard Jesus said you can't go with me but go home can I get a witness tell your neighbor go home go home return home and show how great things God has done under thee can I get a witness can't you see the man that used to be naked can't you see the man that used to be crazy can't you see the man that used to dwell in the cemetery? Can I get a witness uh, walking on down the road? Every now and then he'll look back at Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go home. Go home. Go home. Walking down the road. Thank you, Jesus. Take another step. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Take another step. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. Go home. Go home. Show everybody what great things the Lord has done. Look at the man. He began to look back. Couldn't see Jesus no more. He got in a trot. Can I get a witness? Give God Almighty. He got in a trot. His trot turned into a run. Yes, he did. Going home. Can I get a witness? I heard everywhere that he went along the road. I heard folks say, aren't you the one that used to be in the cemetery? Aren't you the one that used to be crazy? Yes, I am. But I met Jesus. Yes, I am. I met Jesus. He changed. He changed my life. I said, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Is there anybody in here? No God will change your life. If you know it, have you ever changed your life? If you know it, let me hear you. Say, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, won't he do it? There's some folk in here this morning. No, it's changed your life. There's some folk in here this morning that used to be crack addicts. There's some folk in here this morning used to be club addicts. There's some folk in here this morning can I get a witness? Used to be a gossip addict. There's some folk in here this morning. God, don't fool me here. Don't you act like everybody's saved been saved all your life it's some of us in here can I get a witness oh sure if you know what God did for you you are just witnessing somebody say he changed he changed my life yes he did he changed my sense of direction yes he did yes he did he made a way he made a way Y'all excuse me here. Y'all may not be able to say this, but just give me a little time.
can I have a little time and just look back to many dangerous toils and stairs the Lord has brought me through y'all excuse me here but I just want to tell him you've been mighty you've been mighty you've been mighty mighty good to me you made a way yeah yeah Somebody here don't mind telling somebody else. Do I have anybody? Do I have about ten folks who can look back just a few years and see what God has done for you, and look at where you are now? See, some other folk in there that need to come out of some stuff. If you don't mind, just get out of the seat. I don't care if you hug them. I don't care if you just shake the hand. You can point your finger. Whatever you need to do, just tell somebody. Say if it did it for me. He can do it for you. Now look back at him and say, Hold on! Don't give up. I'm going to pray for you. You pray for me. And everything will be all right. Yeah. Yeah. I've had some good days I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days And some sleepless nights Somebody's been there But when I around Woo! and I think things over all of my good days I'll win my bad days I I won't complain Sometimes the clouds hang low. It's gonna come. I can hardly see see the road. I ask the question, Lord, why me? Why so much pain? But He knows what's best for me. Even though my weary eyes they cannot see, so I just say thank you, Lord. Can you just say, just say thank you, Lord? I I won't complain. Why won't? Why? 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 God, God's been good to me. to me more than this whole world are you could ever be he's been so good he's been so good he's been so good to to me to me to me 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 he tries tries all my tears away Turn my darkness in the day. So I lift my hand and say, Thank you, Lord. I've been lying on, but thank you, Lord. I've been me 
mistreated but thank you Lord I've been called everything but a child of God but thank you Lord thank you Lord I want I want to pray God good God Almighty you ought to tell somebody God has been so good to me He's been real good to me More than this whole world I you could ever be He's been so good He's been so good To, to me Me Can you help me say Point to yourself To me, me, me I had to cry sometimes, but it drives all my tears away. Turn my midnights in the day. So instead of complaining, I said, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've gone through this and I've gone through that. But thank you, Lord. I've been up. I've been knocked down. But thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. I feel like God. you give up this morning I feel the trials may come the door is open the door is open invitations extended on every hand oh I feel Oh, I feel like go. Oh, those trials come on every hand. May the grace of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit rest with you. May the sunlight of peace and mercy continue to guide you. May the Lord bless. May the Lord bless. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord bless your going out and your coming in. May the Lord continue you to, to let you be the head and not the tail. Let the Lord continue to bless you in the city, bless you in the field. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Go in peace.